goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Let's start with the positive black news, the cool uh, shit that black people are creating, experiencing, um, doing, getting, receiving, all of the above, just all the cool stuff that's happening to and for us. Uh, so let's get off into it. Um, the first story comes to us tonight from uh, the New England area, uh, the Boston area. We got this company called Black on Boss that helps to help black businesses thrive and gain visibility. And that's just coming to us from bnc.tv. Um, part of the organization's mission is to create opportunities to increase visibility through community building and leveraging new audiences. So basically, back, Black Owned Boss um, launched in March 2019 as a platform to highlight and uplift Black owned businesses, places, and spaces in the state of Massachusetts. Jada Turner, the organization's founder, said she was inspired to create the group from her own experiences as a business owner. As a Boston native and entrepreneur myself, I was inspired to create Black-owned Boss as an opportunity for the visibility for other local Black-owned businesses in the greater Boston area, she said. I wanted to create a platform to further their network, to further their customers, to grow their customer base and diversify it and just really change the way we are spending our money and how that money is allocated in different neighborhoods and communities in the greater Boston area. So um, the article goes on, you know, to basically give testimonies of uh, several black businesses in that area um, from who you got, uh, Q made it, an entrepreneur, an, um, an apparel business by uh, a brother named Quante Turner um that then got help from this company um Aaron Spencer um looks like he's doing some type of agricultural thing um where he has like his own like uh almond butter and like organic foods um company um called a butter um so yeah man so this is a black woman out here you know helping other black businesses making it her business to help other black businesses. So if you uh, can look in the black owned boss, that's black owned BOS period. So basically like uh, an abbreviation for Boston, uh, black owned boss. Um, Miss Jada Turner out here, you know, uplifting her fellow man and making sure that she pull other people up as she rides, man. Salute to the queen. Do your thing, big lady, do your thing. <laughs> do Need your more? thing, big lady. <laughs> What? <laughs> Need more people like her. But man. <laughs> I ain't never heard that term. Face is that crazy. phrase ever <laughs> in life. But it is hilarious. What? Do your phrase, big lady? Face, you know they gonna get you for that. <laughs> Do your thing, big lady. Do your thing. I you act, like I said, something derogatory. I wish they would. I wish they would. Because at the end of the day, they, uh, they, they should know where I could go and where I could say, I'm bigging up another sister, a queen, an African an African American female doing her thing. I just big her up in my way. <laughs> Y'all should appreciate me being unique. People it every appreciate the pimping. The appreciate me. <laughs> appreciate me. The the <laughs> 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 it's going to be one of them nights. Oh, God. Yo, my one face. My, I, yo, I my face hurt would. like I've been in the box, <laughs> man, Joe, already right now. Yo, so I already know where we're going with this. Oh, we just getting uh, started, man. We just getting started. Um, but salute to the Queen Jada Turner, yo, for Black Home Boss, man. Yes, that is indeed. a really yes, dope concept. Uh, and I hope that expands to, you know, include more cities and states, man. Um, I so mean, I, I, I hope, uh, excuse me, I, I hope that she, in some way, inform someone gets the knowledge of what she's doing and don't mm -hmm. steal what she's doing, but try to incorporate her into a, like a, a, a national database or, or a national type field. So all black businesses in, a, in our in our nation can get incorporated in her database and she can make it large. You feel me? It's, no, it's good that she started, to, you feel me? Like, because that would make her a billionaire. I mean, just off just big, making money, but just to 
network on top of network on top of network because you're connecting so many different black businesses or that would never be able to get in contact with somebody. So you may have a manufacturer up in Maine, you feel me, that's connected with somebody in Florida now that they've never, never been able to talk to, never been able to even recognize or know. But being they want to maybe just support just other black businesses and now they got to connect down there and now they can do business from across the nation. So I mean that that's a good thing. Hopefully she does get to that level. But why she's just on the state to state level on, on her on her state, I hope everybody there networks like they need to and keep moving on. Like that's some big shit. Yeah, are you? Yeah. Um, on to another queen doing big things. Uh, Black girl magic. She owns the wireless carrier and the smartphone. Um, this is coming to us from BlackNews.com. Um, it's not every day you see people of color entering the consumer electronics and telecom space. It's certainly not every day that it's a black woman. Two years ago, Queen, please don't be mad at me if I mess up this name, but Shamalia Moncrief, an Alabama native, broke the news that she was launching a prepaid wireless carrier, Tessex Wireless Network. Shortly after the news broke, the wireless carrier quickly garnered the attention of various new out- news outlets and the announcement went viral. Not long after the company launched, the Black Enterprise article reported the company's surprising valuation of $5.9 million. Turns out, Shamaria uh. was offered $4.4 million for her wireless carrier before she officially launched and received $1.5 million in investments. She turned down the sale offer. When asked why she was possibly turned down an offer, she responded, before anything, I look at the numbers. So I understand why I was off a 4.4 for a company that I hadn't launched yet. From the wait list and pre-sales, I knew, they saw early on what Tessex could be, and so did I. There was no way I was selling off a company I hadn't had the chance to experience yet. So since launching in 2018, she's been quietly building and developing her brand in Montgomery. She talks about how this has been one of the hardest things she's ever done. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, she didn't stop there, though, in 2020 during the pandemic's peak. She did the unthinkable. She launched her very own smartphone under a second vendor, a second venture, Inspire. Mm. Uh, Inspire. In a letter to her supporters, she talked about how her 19-year-long dream of hers to have her own smartphone and electronics as her love for tech peaked at just seven years old. Um, so she got her own, mm. in between Inspire and Tessic, she got her own phone and the actual wireless company to launch it on. So uh, if you're in the Alabama area, look into it. Um, see if it's something that may, you know, be able to suit you or whatever. And man, I I think this is dope. So salute to the Queen, Shamir, your mm-hmm. Creek. Um, that's it's so pretty damn dude. mayor. I hope this shit get as big as Verizon, man. Yeah, like that's pretty dope. So go ahead, that's Queen. That's how it starts. I'll Innovation. get the Shamaria phone. Innovation. Come on out here to Georgia. I get the Shamaria phone. All right. Find some black history there. Right on. Um, so this next story. Hold on. Let's see what happens. The next story coming to us from uh, NBC News. And it's about a hip-hop coffee shop that pays for free therapy one cup at a time. So hip-hop artist Christopher Lamarck started healing from decades of trauma thanks to therapy. He decided to help his fellow Chicago residents. A Chicago coffee shop that focuses on mental health wants to make sure its customers have a place to talk about hard stuff. Christopher Lamarck, the founder of Coffee, Hip Hop, and Mental Health, has dealt with trauma for much of his life after being abandoned and abused for a span of 12 years. Lamarck said that he didn't know either of his parents and struggled with a lot of complications, including physical, mental, and emotional abuse for 30 years of his life. In 2018, the tra- that trauma caught up to him, and he started crying uncontrollably in a Starbucks in Chicago's Southside neighborhood. I just couldn't stop, so I went to therapy, Lamarck, a hip-hop artist and performer, told today's Carson Daily. After some challenging sessions, my therapist sat up in his seat and said, if it wasn't, for- it wasn't your fault, you were abused. And now for the first time, I heard it. I had been feeling like it was my fault, because that's what happens. It's so much shame that comes with being abused. As Lamarck worked through the marathon of healing from trauma, he felt called to help others do the same. So he went home and wrote down coffee, mental health, and hip hop, three phrases that symbolize healing to him. 
Um, so basically, because of those three words, he wrote down coffee because of the mental and emotional breakdown happened inside of the coffee shop. The hip hop saved his life from committing suicide. And he always had a chance to write. So it was just like his first form of therapy and mental health because in, the, in our community, we taught to survive, but we're not talking about it. So I wanted to normalize it. So with that, he opened up Coffee, Hip Hop and Mental Health, a nonprofit organization where every hip hop inspired drink souls sold helps fund free therapy sessions for individuals in need. Lamarck said that initially he wanted to sell enough coffee and merchandise to send 250 people to therapy. One woman, public school teacher, Faith Overall, was among the first helped by the program. Um, it goes on to kind of give her testimony. But basically, this dude is out here selling coffee and stuff and basically giving people free therapy sessions with the money. So that is amazing. Y'all know uh, the partners we here, we are huge proponents for mental health, mental health awareness, um, seeking out um, help and professional help with mental health um, if you're going through stuff. So like, I'm all about therapy. So dope shit, brother uh, Lamarck. Um, I think this is amazing king what's his name let me get back to it coffee hip-hop and mental health um and his name is christopher lamarck um so out of chicago ah. if you go back to the coffee shop please 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 get that if i go to chicago i'll take my therapy with my with almond milk because i'm like this i'm telling it <laughs> indeed my <laughs> brethren indeed. and that's the other and to do anything with milk, that'll be a whole different type of trauma. Oh, yeah, I, I don't need no cafe LA. Give me some cafe with some almonds. Nigga, what? Because I don't like <laughs> be <a> this situation. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, it, it'll. God bless. Um, this next story comes to us again from NBCnews.com. HBCUs are out here clearing student balances and canceling debt with federal funds. So uh, we talked about another school a while back, but this one is one of the larger ones. This is Clark, Clark Atlanta University is wiping out kids' uh, student debt using their COVID relief fund. So they are assisting nearly 2,000 students with account balances. So basically, if you're struggling, um, go see about this. Because you might be able to, you know, they got the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund from the HBCUs. And uh, with that, you know, go ahead, go check in with your registrar, your people there, you know. See if you can get that help, man. If, you go, if you're struggling to pay your stuff off, go get that relief. Um, but this is dope. Clock. Come on around. Um, HU, Virginia State, come on around. Come on do that. <laughs> come on cancel this debt. You don't know how much, boy, cancel that shit. Cancel that shit's net. Mm. Cancel that shit's net. Cancel. 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 But um <laughs> that face you made. <laughs> but um cancel it. Stevie J face. I mean that. I mean that. Yeah, I really mean it. Um, but that's dope. So if you went to Clock Atlanta, holla at him. This next one is uh and this last one really. Is about a huge queen uh -huh. in the game. Uh -huh. um, the first black female director to debut atop the U.S. box office, Nia DaCosta. Salute to the queen. Her new horror flick, Candyman, is having oh, a yeah, spectacular opening weekend. I will be watching that movie, and uh, we will be talking about it on the pod coming up very soon. Um, but, yeah, she is killing it. Um Really just murdering the game with it. Um, I got some B-roll involving us talking about uh, Candyman that I think I might drop just, you know, because we was literally talking about this dude the other week, and now number one at the box office, this queen is out here reigning supreme. So salute to Nia DaCosta for being number one at the box office. Um, it's amazing. And Ava DuVernay uh, had come close in 2018 with a wrinkle in time with, at number two, but he had the cost of shattering down barriers. And uh, hopefully this, this type of energy keeps on going at the box office. So Nia DaCosta, salute, hats off, top. Salute, salute. You do, you're doing it, Queen. Salute, salute, salute. And I'm and liking that is. the trailer of the movie. I'm liking how they redid 
from what I seen and how they redid the movie and they just took on the next chapter of it. I'm a can like I said in the in the uh, last time we spoke, I'm a Candyman fan, like horror genre. You know, just a movie go up all around, but with this movie, I love how they redid it. Right. Um, so yeah, man. Salute to Nia DaCosta. And that is the positive black news that you can use. Hopefully it inspires, hopefully it informs, hopefully it gives you some things to think about, hopefully it gives you the people to look into. Hopefully, you know. It just sets your week off on a real, you know, positive note. So salute to all of the kings and queens we covered tonight. And uh, yeah, man, thank you, Clark Atlanta University, for wiping out debt for some of these students, man. I know it's really needed, so respect. And that's all I got for the positive black news, baby. Yeah.